Ever wondered why sometimes anime fans get so passionate about their favorite shows? It's because anime has a unique ability to spark intense debates and dramas that ultimately divide fans into passionate factions. You might have heard of the classic question, can he defeat Goku though? That has been debated for, well, I guess decades now. But it's not just about the power levels, so there's so much more to these debates. So let's dive into the moments that divided the anime community itself. But before we move on, make sure to subscribe to the channel and press on that bell icon and set us all to be notified about all our latest new videos. And with that said, let's dive on it. Now, some of you may not have been here for this, especially in the new anime fandom, but do you remember the time when you thought Madoka Magica was just another cute magical girl anime? That's the biggest lie on the internet, because fans really thought that Madoka Magica was your average magical shoujo anime filled with all this cutesy stuff. And then BAM! A character you've grown to love suddenly becomes a manipulative mastermind who's willing to do anything to achieve her goals. That's right, Homura manipulated and controlled Madoka's life without her consent. The series changed completely as it explored many thought-provoking themes like free will, destiny, and the nature of existence. To top it all off, the betrayal of Homura Akami truly divided the anime community. Still, it's what makes Madoka Magica Rebellion an extremely powerful story. You see, initially, Homura was a really selfless person who constantly tried to save Madoka, but in the Rebellion movie, her character just completely flipped, did a complete 180. And even though some fans like the realistic perspective of the story of how human beings can change over time, given certain trauma and pain, others view this moment as nothing short of pure tragedy. <laughs> And next up we have a moment that left fans saying what the actual hell raised countless controversies and ultimately divided the anime community. That's right, we're talking about Lelouch's resurrection in Code Geass. Lelouch didn't only manipulate his enemies, but the whole anime community. Lelouch masterfully planned his death before the final battle against his friend and rival, Sukazu. At the end of the series, Lelouch's Geass allowed people to do his bidding. And then he used his power to manipulate the actions of others and created a fake narrative surrounding his death, making it appear that his existence had completely perished. But since he had planned everything beforehand, one of his friends secretly took Lelouch's body and resurrected him back to life by rebuilding his body. This very resurrection was the source of the division of the anime community since many fans thought that his resurrection undermined the original ending of the series. But some fans were also delighted to see Lelouch come back and started questioning the limits of Lelouch's chaos power. So to this day, fans can't forget this unexpected twist which was once a hot topic among the Code Geass fans. Hey, so this is the JK. What? Huh? What are you doing in this time? Go home. Oh, stop. Now imagine you're an extremely lonely salary man who just got rejected by your crush. Feeling sorry for yourself and you want to go home, hoping to meet the love of your life someday. But you end up meeting who? A runaway high school girl who offers you an interesting deal. Now before you guess, let me tell you that there is a 2021 anime that was particularly controversial in Japan, and that anime is Higehiro. The main character is a salary man who gets rejected by his crush and has a fateful encounter with a runaway high school girl, Sayu who offers him physical intimacy in exchange for accommodation. Well, right off the bat, just what the heck? Who comes up with a story like that? But anywho, but anywho, even though Yoshida refuses the physical intimacy part, he still lets her stay at his apartment, not just for one day, but a long, long time. You see, this is a very tricky situation, and fans reacted to this anime in an interesting way. Such a gentleman, right? But it doesn't change the fact that this anime received backlash for its controversial plot. First, the Japanese community seemed to be quite divided on this. Some people were delighted to see it, while others were completely disturbed. There are a lot of 5-star reviews as well as 1-star reviews for Higehiro, so you can see how divided this anime actually is. 
Some people even believe Higehiro to be a grooming anime due to the significant age gap between Yoshida and Sayu. Regardless, what do you think of this situation? Let us know in the comments down below. And now, do you guys remember back when Darling in the Frank started off as a fun, action-packed mecha anime? Yeah, me too! We were all so excited about the giant robots, cute characters, and the kick-ass battles. But then BAM! This very anime took a darker and more mature turn with time. Like, imagine you're watching an anime for its amazing animation, badass characters, and epic battles, and you're hooked. But then, out of nowhere the plot takes a shift into the 18 plus territory, leaving you feeling very confused and extremely uncomfortable. So back in the day, Darling in the Franks received a lot of backlash from the fans, especially for its infamous episode 14 where Ichigo and Zero Two got into a not so appropriate relationship. It was that moment that made fans realize ethical concerns due to her being overly possessive and controlling of Ichigo. Oh, and not to mention how Ichigo was a minor at the time, which only makes things more complicated considering how Zero Two was much more mature in experience. <laughs> and talking about being complicated, how can we go on without Evangelion's ending? <laughs> Let's talk about that one, shall we? <laughs> Neon Genesis Evangelion is like that puzzle you started while being highly motivated, but then you realized it was missing a few pieces, and now you're just staring at it thinking to yourself, oh yeah, what the heck is going on? Now Neon Genesis Evangelion has tons of psychological themes, such as existentialism and nihilism. The show starts off with a teenage boy, Shinji Ikari, who basically pilots a giant robot to fight off extraterrestrial beings. Now, being everyone in the world knows how much of a confusing ending Neon Genesis Evangelion had, I bet people with the best IQs wouldn't be able to understand the ending of this anime even if they watched it from the start. In the final episode of Neon Genesis Evangelion, the focus shifts more to the internal struggles of our characters with a lot of symbolism that got hard to understand really quickly. It's no wonder that fans were divided by this ending and how this confusing resolution frustrated them. They were literally left wondering if the characters are even real people or just figments of their imagination. And now we have an anime that held the expectations of the global anime community, but it failed to deliver. Yes, we're talking about the CGI in Attack on Titan Season 4 Part 1 which was a controversial topic among fans due to its notable difference in quality compared to the series' original 2D quality. For example, the battle between Eren and Reiner Braun had a lot of CGI, and while some fans enjoyed the realistic CGI, others found it, well, quite distracting. Since the battle between Eren and Reiner was a highly anticipated one, fans held great expectations as Eren was doing his thing, destroying his home while Reiner was determined to prove his loyalty to the Marleys. Therefore, this particular battle was notable due to its high-profile nature and the impact it had on the overall story. So the sudden shift from 2D animation to CGI can indeed be confusing for some fans, and it turns out to be the very reason why the anime community got divided. We're getting very close to it being a decade about this infamous scene, but I replay it in my head every single day. Tell me, what hurts more than a breakup? The infamous I love Amelia scene from Ray Zero. Yes, now imagine you just threw out your suppressed feelings of love for someone and they reject you instantly on your face saying they love someone else. Now that can be a lot to digest, right? Right? That's exactly what Rem went through in Ray Zero. So this moment really was a turnoff for fans since our main guy Subaru rejected a nice girl like Rem who wished to encourage him throughout his struggling days. The rejection felt like a slap to Rem's face after all the sacrifices she had made for Subaru. This specific moment divided the anime community because some fans believe that Subaru protects Rem from further pain by rejecting her and others believe him to be genuinely rejecting Rem's feelings. So Ray Zero's I Love Amelia will be remembered for years to come, generation after generation. Huh? 
Now, how would you feel if you found out that your favorite character who was portrayed as a boy all along was actually a girl? Get ready, One Piece fans, because we're talking about the true identity of Yamato here. So Yamato first appeared in the Wano Country arc of One Piece as a child living in isolation on Kuri Island. Yamato became a combat support to the Straw Hats. Initially, Yamato was introduced as a little boy with masculine features, which led fans to assume her gender. Later on, she was then revealed to be an actual girl, which sparked a lot of controversies among the One Piece fans. It is still one of the most well-known controversies that divided the anime community because while some fans assumed her to be a man or a woman, there was actually a group of people who thought Yamato was transgender. Fans could literally not accept this confusing revelation since she was first introduced as a boy and then later revealed to be a girl. Some fans also raised questions about whether the series treated the topic in a thoughtful or respectful way. <laughs> Now, do you guys remember the legendary badass character L from Death Note? Remember how he died? This very death led to one of the most unfair and dissatisfying deaths in the anime because L actually became everyone's favorite character ever since Light Yagami turned evil. So let's talk about how L actually died and how this very moment divided the anime community. Misa Amane Shinigami, Rem, was actually responsible for killing L. She simply wrote his name in the death notebook, and L died of a heart attack right there and then. Ever since fans started getting fond of L for his intellect and anti-hero characteristics, the series decided to slam fans with a shocking death. A lot of fans were dissatisfied with L's ultimate fate and hopped on a darker journey with the series. I bet many fans stopped watching Death Note after L's death because the death of such a beloved character was a major blow to the series. And lastly, and for the second time seeing it on this list, it's Attack on Titan. But it's ending. Now imagine all the struggles, endless battles, and sheer determination coupled with maximum hard work. All for what? Death. That's right, fellows. At the very end of Attack on Titan, our legendary main character Eren Yeager dies. The ending of Attack on Titan showed that Eren must become a villain to protect the people he loves, and so he decided to use the ultimate power move, the Rumbling, which releases giant titans to destroy his enemies and bring peace to his friends. However, his friends tried to stop him from doing this. Now, nobody was satisfied with this ending at all, I can tell you what. Even though Eren proved that he'd be willing to do literally anything to protect his loved ones, many fans still considered him to be the main villain, because there are two sides to this ending. One is the negative look on humanity, and the other is the hope for a better future. So Eren's actions during the rumbling showed how people can have both good and bad sides to them. Anyways, that's a wrap for today. These were the top 10 moments that divided the anime community. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up before you go. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press on that bell icon for the latest updates on all our latest new videos. Feel free to drop a comment under the video about your thoughts from today's list and let us know if there are any moments that you think we should have added or that you believe are more controversial or interesting than the ones we provided. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.